Hey guys, this video is sponsored by SteelSeries, so make sure to stick around after the end to find out how you can get a discount on your next order. Well, wrapping up the end of a pretty abysmal year for shooters, and I guess gaming in general, we've got the release of Halo Infinite. Yeah, the first proper entry in the series since Halo 5, way back in 2015. The Master Chief returns. And after having spent about 14 hours with the campaign, I can indeed confirm that this is a Halo game through and through. Hey. Whether or not I'm entirely in love with it though, I'm still not sure, but people who want to put themselves back into Master Chief's iconic boots, with gameplay that feels about as old as he does, are going to find a lot to like about this latest entry. As for the rest of us, well, keep watching. Not going to happen. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the multiplayer in this thing. Truth be told, I'm not even close to opening up that can of worms, and I'm not even really sure that I want to. But I do think that it's really important to separate the two, because they are obviously vastly different experiences. We don't want another repeat of what happened with reviews for Doom back in 2016, so my thoughts on the campaign have nothing to do with the multiplayer. Capiche? Also, I think I should be kind of honest from the get-go, I'm not the biggest Halo fan. In fact, the last time I even played one of these games on launch was Halo 2 on the original Xbox. Yeah, I'm that old. You are one pathetic loser. I'm not invested in the series and I'm not really emotionally attached to it either. So launching into this campaign kind of felt like I'd just come out of a coma and was trying to remember a previous life. Infinite opens with the Master Chief getting wrecked by a brute before he's then tossed off into space. If you like me and you haven't been keeping up to date on current events or played the spin-off games like Halo Wars 2, well, then you'll probably have no idea what the hell's going on. Okay then. But in short, the main enemy faction in Infinite are the Banished, a splinter group of familiar foes led by the Brutes that broke off from the Covenant and have become the main antagonistic force fighting back against the remnants of the UNSC. Chief is then rescued by the most NPC-looking NPC that ever existed. Are you kidding me? And has to return to another Halo ring with a character that looks like Cortana, sounds like Cortana, acts like Cortana, but isn't Cortana. Yeah, and she's called Weapon for some reason. Why? Not to mention, she's also voiced by Jen Cortana Taylor. Still here. <laughs> Now, I don't really know at what point exactly this character became like the be-all and end-all in the center of Halo's universe, but either way, it seems the main focus of the story here is Chief's mission to try and find out what's happened to her. Along with dealing with the constant threat of the Banished and its lead-up, a dude who is seriously pissed off. Humanity will tower before your legacy. Most of the cinematics in the game, though, just involve standing around and listening to palm-sized, not Cortana talk. Occasionally, you'll get some kind of exciting sequence, which is obviously out of your control, but it's really just exposition followed by exposition and then washed down with some more, you guessed it, exposition. I told you, we lost. There's some really weird facial animation going on in this thing as well, like Mass Effect Andromeda levels of facial animation. The faces that not Cortana pulls here are just really weird, and her eyes and mouth are almost too expressive. It just looks inhuman. You know what I also hate about every form of media these days? How every scene has to have some kind of stupid quip or a bit of banter thrown in to completely kill the mood. I blame the Marvel movies for setting this precedent and it seems they can never hold a serious tone for more than 30 seconds before someone's gonna make some kind of stupid joke or sarcastic remark. The music wasn't particularly memorable either, and the only track I can even remember hearing which was any good is that same song they've been using since the first game. Which, if nothing else, is at least a good compliment to Marty O'Donnell, who, sadly, isn't the composer for Infinite. Now, before I even get to the gameplay, we have to talk about the performance and the visuals in this thing. So the game opens up with a very linear prologue sequence that kind of gives a misrepresentation of what's to come. Now these first few areas look really good and they also run really smoothly. My game defaulted to run in 4K ultra wide on the maxed out settings and for these starting areas it ran smooth as butter. Then once you finish this prologue, the game opens up literally as it introduces that open world map at which point the frame rate absolutely tanked. I went from getting a smooth 140 FPS at 4K to suddenly barely holding 50. <laughs> Man. Even dropping the resolution down to 1080, it was still kind of choppy. And the thing is, the game doesn't look good enough to justify it running so poorly. 
It's kind of hilarious too that this was supposed to be released for the launch of the Xbox Series X a year ago. I mean, they were dreaming if they ever thought that was possible. And also if they thought it was even going to hold up as a good looking launch title. I don't think it's hyperbole to say that some of these environments in these outside areas really do look like something off the Xbox 360. Kind of reminded me a lot of playing through Halo Reach with these very bad looking rocks, trees and grass. Whenever you're locked into one of the main story missions inside these self-contained structures is again when the performance seems to steady out. So it kind of leads me to assume that these outside areas just haven't been optimized properly. I remember too when Crisis 2 came out on the PC that it ran like ass because at the time there was some kind of oversight where the game was rendering an entire ocean even when that water wasn't visible. So maybe there's something going on here and the same kind of thing is happening. Either way though it doesn't seem to be a very consistent game in terms of the performance which when you've got a build that uses a 3080 Ti is a bit of a letdown. It still looks true to the series in terms of the art style and the aesthetic which is either a good or a bad thing depending on your love for the franchise. And it's a Halo game through and through so you'll see some familiar foes along with a few new entries. <laughs> On the subject of foes, I have to admit that there is still something definitely enjoyable about Halo's combat, I mean, most of the time anyway. It's a simple but kinda complex combat system, where simply shooting everything with an assault rifle isn't gonna get you very far. Basically, for every single enemy you come up against, there's weapons that work for better or worse against their defenses. Your basic grunts, which are one of the most endearing enemies in the entire series, along with having some of the funniest banter, can be put down pretty easily with whatever weapon you've got in your hands, but everyone else is a little bit different. The Covenant Elites, for instance, have energy shields, and a good plasma weapon's gonna knock that shield down faster than your mum's clothes hit my bedroom floor on a Saturday night. What? Same thing with the Jackals, little pricks that are about as resilient as a house of cards, but equipped with a powerful handheld shield that again, a good plasma weapon's gonna rip to pieces. Brutes on the other hand are heavily armored and you first need to shoot the armor off their body to then even deal damage. So a weapon like the Battle Rifle works well against chipping their armor down to find that gooey weak spot. There's variance to all of this and obviously the weapons these guys carry is gonna change things up a bit, but it is a simple system to get the hang of. <laughs> It just kind of forces you to constantly switch out weapons and change your strategy and that's definitely a part of what makes the game so much fun when it does click. People always say that Halo is a combat sandbox and I think the difference with these games is that it's the player who has to adapt to the AI versus the AI adapting to the player. They're very much in control during combat and it's up to you to change your methods to deal with that or else you're going to perish horribly. <laughs> You disappoint me, Spartan. Where it starts to shit the bed though is against some of the more spongier fights. There's these new enemies in Infinite that are called the Spartan Killers. They're these big tough assholes that serve as mini boss fights and they are the absolute definition of some goddamn bullshit. I was playing on heroic difficulty and the only way that I was able to get through some of these was just by cheesing through them. I mean, trying to take them on in a stand up fight was just fucking impossible. I had to pull back and whittle their health down from a distance with an MG or something, which still took forever. One of the earlier ones is against a guy with a gravity hammer, and I was just lucky that I happened to have one of those things before I started the fight, or else I honestly have no idea how you're supposed to beat him. Even still though, he managed to wallop me the first time due to the insanely large reach of that thing. You'll still suffer a lot of those kind of instant deaths during general combat as well, where you often just can't even pinpoint what it was that killed you. What did you do? What was your- are you me? But the ridiculous amount of checkpoints you're given kind of circumvents the frustration from this. Because you're really only ever losing a few minutes of your time when you're killed anyway. But look, I mean, I never really expected there to be any giant changes with the combat. And I feel like complaining about that is kind of like playing Monopoly in 2021 and then bitching about having to pass go and collecting $200. All they ever really needed to do was add in a few new weapons and a few new enemy types, and that's pretty much all they've done. And I do think that some of the new weapons are pretty fun. Why? Early on in the game, I used the hell out of the Mangler, a revolver which the Brutes carry that does pretty good damage. The only downside is that this thing has horrendous bullet drop-off, which I think they've probably just done, so the player can't use it to cheese enemies from a safe vantage point. The Pulse Carbine is more or less the Covenant Carbine in a different form, and again, it's pretty damn effective against, well, everything. The Disruptor is a new one too. Now, this thing's a pistol that does shock damage, which is handy against the abundance of vehicles that you're gonna have to deal with in these open world sections. Sadly though, I really do feel like they've kind of ruined the shotgun in this thing, which is kind of a travesty considering how devastating the old Halo shotgun used to be. 
The Bulldog, as it's called now, is a faster firing variant that just seems to have bugger all range. Even still, though, it doesn't really seem to do that much damage, even when you're riding close to someone anyway. I mean, of all the things to ruin in a Halo game, or a shooter in general, the shotgun shouldn't have been one of them. Hey, Lion! The biggest change Infinite makes, though, is that it's now got a much larger map than the previous games, in the way that it actually has a map. It's almost kind of bordering on being an open world game at times, separated into different hubs. The way that it works is that Infinite's entire campaign plays out like one giant long corridor, but then in between the main missions, you can choose to go off and do various side activities on the map. You're either capturing fobs to turn into fast travel points, you're destroying Covenant outposts, killing high value targets, or rescuing captured marines. That's pretty much it. You then earn Valor points to unlock new gear, which is kind of pointless, because once you're locked into one of the main missions, you're gonna have to be swapping weapons out anyway, completely defeating the purpose of a custom loadout. I've sent updated schematics back to our forward operating bases. Should give us an edge. But you can find and earn Spartan points to upgrade your suit, which is useful, but again, becomes kind of pointless, because the only ones really worth upgrading are the shield and the grapple shot, which I'll get to shortly. Navigating the map's also incredibly confusing because of how rocky and mountainous the terrain is. I mean, you might only be trying to go somewhere that's a few hundred meters away, but because it's on the other side of a giant mountain or hidden behind a bunch of trees, it's really unclear as to how the fuck you're supposed to get there. Driving is obviously the smart choice, but the map is speckled with random enemies just standing around waiting for combat. And you can't even pause the game to check the map screen because bringing that thing up doesn't stop the gameplay for some reason. Honestly, I lost count of the amount of times I thought I was fine and then brought that map up only for someone to suddenly start shooting me out of nowhere. You piece of shit! It just kind of feels very half-assed and if you're used to all of the quality of life inclusions that most open world games have these days, well, then this is just going to feel very stripped back. <laughs> Another new addition to Infinite are these new gadgets that Master Chief can use. Throughout the game, you keep coming across fallen Spartans who all have different upgrades. You've got the grapple shot, an upgraded shield, a threat sensor, a drop wall shield, and a thruster dash move. All of which are just abilities recycled from the multiplayer. The upgraded shield is really just the basic shield that you've always got equipped. Only now you can actually increase its capacity, which is pretty much essential on the high difficulties. And the only other thing I even really bothered to use was the grapple shot, which is useful in pretty much every single situation in the game. The threat sense is really only necessary for a short sequence after you get it, where you're in these dark, smoky corridors and can't see shit. I guess it could be also useful for detecting those cloaked elites, but usually when you come up against these guys, they'll catch you unaware anyway and kill you before you've even got time to get one down. I have slain the, demon. the drop wall shield is kinda handy, but then again, standing still on heroic difficulty is kinda like signing your own death warrant, so I didn't really use this one. And then that dash move is just completely useless. The distance you can actually dash before this is upgraded is pathetic. But apart from that, you can be much more mobile with the grappling hook anyway. The dash limits you to left, right, forward, and backward, whereas there's no limit to where you can go with that grapple shot. So yeah, back to my original point, all of these pretty much suck except the grapple shot. And what is it with grappling hooks in video games at the moment too? We've got one in the upcoming Dying Light 2, there's one in Shadow Warrior 3, and I mean even technically Doom Eternal had one with the meat hook. Yeah, elegant weapon for a more civilized age. Not only can you also grapple weapons to pick them up from a distance, but you can also grapple explosive canisters to then throw at enemies. Canisters which do some hefty damage. And it really does seem like these have just been put around the environments, just begging to be grabbed and then thrown in someone's face. Aside from that, you can also grapple into enemies, stunning them and finishing them off with a melee attack, which is something that never gets old. And also use it to jack vehicles, which is incredibly handy. It's a fun addition, and it's one that definitely works well on the PC, adding a high level of mobility that's much needed, considering the movement speed is pretty slow and clunky otherwise. My only main issue with these gadgets is that you have to manually select which one you want before you can even use it. They're not bound to individual buttons, like G for grappling shot, for instance. And that kind of plays a big part, I think, too, in why I didn't really use anything other than that grapple shot. This has, of course, been done, I think, because of the limitations of people playing with a controller, because really, this is a game designed primarily for the consoles. The absolute biggest issue I have with Halo Infinite, though, is its level design, or lack thereof, and just the complete lack of creativity or originality with any of these main missions. 
So, like I said before, once you're in one of the main missions for the game, you're essentially locked down into one of these self-contained environments until the mission comes to an end. You can't fast travel back out, you're just stuck in there until the whole thing finishes. And it is just this incredibly repetitive flow that never changes. The environments you see 10 minutes into the game are the same ones you're going to be seeing 10 hours in. There's even one point where Not Cortana makes a meta joke about how the area you've just entered looks exactly the same as the last one. Wow, this place is exactly what you'd expect. No shit. Almost every single combat arena is just a large expansive room without any actual visual detail. And they're often symmetrical structures, like someone's taken a deathmatch map, cut it in half right down the middle, copy pasted it, mirrored it, and then just stuck it back together. There'll usually be enemies off in the distance, along with enemies right up close to you of various threat levels, like grunts, brutes, elites, and so on. And you slowly move from cover to cover, picking everything off until the whole room is cleared. You then move down a long hallway, which is completely uninteresting and devoid of any kind of detail. Then you might come to a small room, which often has a couple of weapon containers to rearm with. Then you enter another symmetrical arena and repeat the same thing all over again. Do this maybe half a dozen times per mission, stopping every now and then to watch a cinematic and repeat this process ad nauseum. At a lot of points throughout these missions too, you'll need to go off and find a power seed to power up like a grab lift or a door or something. And this involves just going off to a room to find that seed and then bring it back to the central room and plug it in. And the amount of times you have to do this during the campaign, I'm honestly lost track of. And just to pad the whole thing out even more, they'll often spawn in a wave of enemies after you bring back each of these seeds. Just kind of becomes less about playing a game and more about feeling like clockwork and growing through the same motions over and over. There's rarely any kind of verticality to these arenas. You've got that grappling shot, but really that thing's only used laterally. You don't really get the chance to get above enemies all that often inside these areas. They break the mold a couple of times, giving you some jump pads, but the vast majority of combat takes place on the same level as the player, or shooting at someone slightly above or below you. And look, I understand that that's the way that most of the Halo games have been since the series' inception, but that's kind of my whole point. Here we are, 20 years later, and you may as well just be playing Combat Evolved with a better looking engine and a couple of new tricks. Sometimes too, I kind of get the sense of levels being unfinished. I remember there's a few rooms I entered and there was like a bunch of weapons lying around in those explosive canisters. So I kind of expected that I'd be attacked at some point, but then nothing happened. And it was like they were going to come back later and add the enemies in, but then I don't know, they just forgot or something. Honestly though, by the end of the campaign, I was just in autopilot mode and just waiting for the whole thing to finish. It's about the standard length of a Halo campaign, so anywhere from about 8 to 10 hours. But the inclusion of all the open world stuff's going to keep you coming back if you want to finish it all. Kind of annoyingly too though, it doesn't even do that thing that most open world games do, where it tells you that you're about to lock yourself into that final portion of the game and you can't back out. You know how in like the Far Cry games, how right before the final mission, it'll ask you if you've got anything else you want to do before committing to the final part of the story? Yeah, well, Infinite doesn't do that. No shit. And that final part of the campaign goes for about three to four hours, which you're essentially locking yourself into. It also kind of feels like it has no real sense of pacing. You just keep going from room to room. And honestly, when the whole thing ended, I was kind of baffled. It just never really felt like it was building up to this final encounter. Like all of my sexual escapades, it came to a sudden finish and it left me feeling underwhelmed and empty. <laughs> Halo Infinite just kind of feels like it's a game not aimed at people like me. People who only kind of like the Halo series. If you're just after the same thing you've had for the last half dozen or so games, that familiar repetition of environments and combat, along with a multiplayer mode that realistically is going to get far more support from the developers anyway, well, then you'll probably love this. Honestly though, I just didn't find the whole thing all that much fun or engaging. And all this game taught me is what I already knew, that I'm not a Halo fanboy. Just kind of felt like I was playing a 2001 game in 2021. <laughs> Maybe that's the irony of a Halo game having infinite in its title, because I really did feel like I was just in this infinite loop of repeating the same basic gameplay loop over and over with no real end in sight. I don't think it's a bad game overall, but I do kind of think that it's sad that a series which once helped to pioneer the shooter genre has now just become so run-of-the-mill and tedious. Right, so if you're still watching, well, thanks for sticking around. And let me give a final shout out to my sponsor, SteelSeries. SteelSeries makes some of the best gaming peripherals from headsets, keyboards, mice, and gaming pads, all synced together with a handy program that lets you modify the hell out of them. 
I'm a bit of a stickler for high quality mouses and keyboards, and whether you're playing a game that's eight months old or eight years old, it makes a huge difference in how well something handles. I would never recommend something that I don't use myself, and I'm pretty stoked to be able to offer a discount to people looking at buying some new gear. So just make sure to use that Chad promo code GMAN at checkout to get 12% off your next order. And as always, thanks for watching.